Congresswoman Marsha Fudge represents Ohio's 11th Congressional District. She's a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, and she joins me now. Congresswoman, thank you so much for being with us. It's my pleasure to be here. So how important is tonight's debate to win support uh, from African-American voters? I think this may be their last best chance to talk to people like me. There's no, there are no more debates. This is the last big stage they're going to have. I think tonight is going to be especially important to anyone who believes that they have an opportunity or a chance to get black votes. What issues do you think black voters want to hear addressed tonight? You know, I think it's interesting that think, people think that black people are different than other people. We all believe in the same thing. We all want to make sure our children get an education that gives them a chance to succeed. We all want to take care of people who are sick. We want to feed people who are hungry. We want to do that too. Uh, we're across the street from historic Mother Emanuel. We want to hear about gun control. What are you going to do to make our neighborhoods and our communities safer? Uh, we want to hear what it is that's going to make me vote for you. Why does voting for you make a difference in my life and the lives of people I care about? You previously endorsed Senator Kamala Harris. I did. Do you intend to endorse another candidate? I probably will. And do you have a sense, though, what is it that you're, are you, your mind is made up right now or are you listening for something no, from the debate No, my mind's not made up. I'm going okay. to listen tonight because I represent a large minority population. I want for someone to convince me that I am going to be able to do better by my people by them being in the White House. So I'm going to give them a last shot at it. And what specifically are you listening for? I'm listening for things like that are happening today. We're, we're talking about cutting free and reduced lunch and breakfast in schools. We're talking about taking money from public education. We are saying to people who, adults with no children, we're going to take you off of food stamps. We're saying we're going to take away um, after school programs and summer programs. And we're saying to seniors, we're going to block grant Medicaid. So depending upon what state you live in will depend upon whether you get care. We have to make sure that we take care of all of our citizens, not just some. So let's talk about some specific candidates. Okay. Pete Buttigieg has struggled, as you know, to gain traction mm -hmm. among voters of color. From your perspective, what do you think he needs to do to improve his standing with those voters? I don't know that there's much he can do. I think he has blown that opportunity. He has had chance after chance after chance. How has he blown it? To, well, because he's not addressed the issues. When the issues are raised about what happens about a black shooting in your city, he doesn't answer. You know, he'll say, oh, we learn from our mistakes. What are you going to do? When we say gentrification is destroying black people's homes and businesses in your community, oh, we learn from our mistakes. But what are you going to do? Do you ever say, I'm sorry, I blew it, I made a mistake, and I'm going to fix it? He hasn't done that, and he's been running for months and months. I think he has blown his chance at that. More broadly, then, are you looking for apologies from some of these candidates on this well, But I'm looking for someone to at least admit that they made a mistake. I don't care if it's just an apology. Uh, just an apology that's empty does nothing for me. I want someone who actually says, I didn't do what I should have, and I'm going to make it right, or I'm going to at least try to make it better. Mm. Um, Senator Bernie Sanders has won the popular vote in three early states so far, and you've expressed doubts over his ability to beat President Trump, Said, and you've said you're hopeful the candidate will be center-left. Why don't you believe that Senator Sanders can beat the president? Well, I think this is kind of starting out very much like it did in 2016. He's won two caucuses, which are really not representative of the people. I mean, caucuses are the most undemocratic process we have. And then he's won a state that is almost 90 plus percent white. I don't think yet he has shown me that he has the ability to take it all the way. He may. I don't know. I think that that's what the process is for for us to see who comes out of it. Do you believe the House majority would be in jeopardy if Sanders was at the top of the ticket? It would not be for me, but there are some people who do believe it would be for them. Hmm. Um, do you think that Senator Sanders should start pivoting towards the center at all, even if his message continues to work in the Democratic primary? No, I think he should be who he is. Uh, and then people will either accept it or not. I don't think that he should change who he is, no. Um, what about Joe Biden? I want to ask you about the slip that we have seen in his support. Uh, he still has uh, sizable support among African-American voters in this state, mm -hmm. um, but it's not as high as it once was. What do you think that's attributable to? Well, I never thought it would be. I mean, he started out with the name recognition that no one else had. He started out before people started spending millions of dollars in this community, in, in this state. Uh, Tom Starr spent $16 million, so maybe his name recognition is about the same now. 
uh, just this past month. Another candidate spent 300000 I don't expect for things not to change. I think when people get to know others, they think about things differently. So it's not, it's not a surprise to me. Uh, back on your endorsement, do you have a time frame? Are you going to be making a decision here yeah, right I after mean, the I debate? Think I, I think I owe it to the people I represent to make a decision. And I'd like to do it before our election. I'm hopeful I may even do it before Super Tuesday. Before Super Tuesday. Possibly. You don't care to give us a little hint on it? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> okay. Representative Marsha Fudge, Congresswoman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. My pleasure.